is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Lord God, let us go uh, into this time tonight here as a community of neighbors facing big challenges and yet delighting in one another and the community we have formed. We pray that your Holy Spirit will rest upon us, our leaders, and guide us to where you would have us. Dear Lord, bless the town and help us today as our city council meeting. Amen. Amen. If you'll stay standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you both for that. This is Schofield. Ramirez. Present. Velasquez. Present. Present. Ayala. Here. Ochoa. Cantoya. Here. Rickoff. I'm here. All right. Uh, minutes of previous meetings, I would entertain a motion. I move the adoption of the minutes of the previous meeting. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. All right, Chief Quick, the floor is now yours for a multiple of things, but first with the service award. Can you turn it off? Pull it up. There you go. Right, Mr. Mayor and, and council people, uh, I would like to uh, introduce Sergeant Anthony Avila, uh, Sergeant uh, Kyle Moore. This uh, award happened back in 22, and with logistics and getting it all put together and everything, we're just finally getting to serve uh, Sergeant Moore. He was actually the officer when this happened. So I'll let uh, Sergeant Avila tell you guys, he was the one that nominated uh, Sergeant Moore for the award, and I'll let him uh, tell you what, what it was about. to the medical call emergent. Uh, he got there before medical personnel did and what he found was a, a gentleman that had recently had a uh, surgery and they had stitched up an artery. Well the stitching had come undone and he was bleeding uh, very badly from, from his artery. Um, Sergeant Moore's quick thinking and swift actions um, in helping slow down the bleeding uh, helped in saving this gentleman's life and I just want to thank Sergeant Moore for for his actions that night and, and let him know that he is very appreciated. Thank you. So we have a plaque uh, honoring Sergeant Moore and then also the standard life-saving pin that he can wear on his uniform. Congratulations. Thank you, Sergeant Moore, for your actions that night and every night. Same to Officer Avila and Chief Quick. You guys do a great job in helping keep our community safe and, you know, for helping others and in medical emergencies as well too. Thank you for that. Thank you, appreciate it. I taught him everything he knows, by the way. <laughs> Todd, Todd. Oh, you're gonna get me done all at once? Yeah, let's, all let's, right. let's do that next. All right. Right. Uh, 
the next thing I have to talk about tonight is Crime Stoppers. Uh, you'll remember Councilman Velasquez, you brought up a motion to, to carry out uh, getting this going, so I just wanted to, to bring it back and, and uh, you know, new people, things like that, get it back on the table. Um, the first page talks about, and for those of you in the audience uh, that would like to know about it, Crime Stoppers helps with tips uh, to the police department uh, to, to help make the community a better place. Um, it's an organization that is not run by the police department, however. So somebody has to pick it up and, and, and councils uh, volunteer to help get that started. So just thought it would be a good time of year to bring it up again and, and see if we can continue to move forward. So the first page talks about how to start the program again. And the second page says contact us. On the back of the second page is the actual application you send in uh, if somebody wants to do that. Uh, right on their website, and then they'll contact us from there. What is the cost on it, Todd? Um, no cost to us. They'll, now as far as the fundraising, stuff like that, we may have to do to get some of the funds, but they also have fun, funds available to help out with that. So there shouldn't be any cost, you know, from the city. Uh, maybe citizens can donate to Crime Stoppers, those type of things, but they do have ways of getting funds or help help raising the funds. At one time we had Crime Stoppers, is that correct? We did, I believe it was back in the 80s. Um, Mr. Maloff was here at that time when we talked about it last time. And he was the one that remembered it, so. Uh, yep. <laughs> I, I don't. Um, what about um, with, with the Crime Stoppers? You had a neighborhood watch meeting? Yes. How did that go? That went very well. That was at the Senior Center during lunch. We are going to be having one. Let me look at the calendar real quick. Um, sorry about that. Is it yeah. the May 30th. Oh. So May 30th, we will be having one at 6 p.m. for all residents of the city of London that would like to come and talk about it. <coughs> uh, Investigator Gorzinski is going to put on a presentation. Most of us will be there to answer questions to try to get this fired up again. And uh, so that'll be the next the next step in it. And then after that, uh, the neighborhoods that want it will have to form their own. We'll uh, give them a liaison from the police department to help with meetings, any questions they may have. But uh, the neighborhood watch is, is their program. We're just there to assist. And it's a, a great way to get more eyes out in the communities and help, help with the crime problem. Did you just have a time for that on the 30th? Yeah, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. 6 p.m., okay. 6 at the senior center? What's <laughs> at the senior center. There are flyers out. We'll get something uh, on the websites. I'll get something out to, to Mr. Hart. Okay. I know Thank they um, have signage, uh, different things that yes. neighborhoods might want that they'll be raffling off. That Or, like, I don't know. There's, yes. like, prizes for neighborhoods that show up and show interest in some sort of Kickstarter yep. items that they were giving out. They Absolutely. will be giving out a big sign on the 30th. Yes, and that's Mr. Pauly who's come up with this. Okay. He really wants to get involved in our community. Yeah. Um, so he's helping out with that. So there will be some, some signs, some small stickers and stuff mm -hmm. we can have with the, the neighbors the hoods that would like those big signs or bigger signs in their area. It would be up for them. It's up to them to purchase those and have them put up. Uh, I don't want to speak for uh, Martin because Montoya, the city engineer, but the previous city engineer helped put up the signs and the city approved that. I, that's something we'll probably have to ask the new interim and council again. Uh, they didn't purchase the signs, but they would help them put them up to make sure they were up legally. I'll, I'll just say on that point, uh, Mr. Pauly, is, <clears throat> as a citizen, has put out probably $800 of his own money to buy signage and stuff to give away. So it's, I mean, it's somebody in your community that's doing something really good and trying to help out. So. Uh, involvement by all would be appreciated so. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, where did this end do we know now like the last time this came through can we can we look into that to see if, if we even need a second motion or if we're just good to go do you guys like Jeremiah or Maureen do you have questions on this because I think everyone else is here besides you and that was just a couple uh, pages I printed off the site. It's uh, go to the site. It's a lot nicer. You can see a lot more things that the public's uh, welcome to go to that site as well. Uh, United States Crime Stoppers, and then hopefully someday soon we'll see one that says Crime Stoppers Lahana on, on that page. Okay. 
I do want to mention though on Crime Stoppers, even though we don't have it now, um, you can still call the PD for anything that happens. It, it frustrates me so much when people say, oh, this happened, and I'm like, would you call the PD? Well, no. That, that doesn't help anything. We can't, they can't do anything <laughs> they, they don't know about. Uh, it's hard enough to do stuff when you do know about it, but, but they're not letting you guys know. You guys are yeah, already starting with that. Uh, sometimes I find out stuff on Facebook myself, and I'll call into dispatch and has this been reported, and I'll look into it so you know please call if it's a non-emergency just call 719-384-2525 uh, we have somebody sitting in that chair 24 7 uh, that can get officers there uh, they may not be able to get there right away if it's not an uh, emergency at that moment but uh, they will eventually get over there and if they don't have anything going on at that time they'll get over there right away anything else you want to bring to our attention sir? Uh, I think that's all I had for tonight and thanks for giving me your time thank you all right, now we are going to do citizen participation for non-agenda items. Uh, five minutes per person. Come up, state your name and address for the record. And it is whoever wants to go first. Hi, everybody. It's Zeke Ayala, 702 Bellevue, uh, the art project. Just want to let everybody know that we are teaming up with Seco News and the City of Mojada Parks and Recreation to bring you the Summer Splash Pool Party on the 31st of May. Uh, we have lots of music, lots of giveaways, prizes, all kinds of stuff. I want to challenge all you guys, you too, Joe, to come down, join the Hula Hoop Contest, join the Cannonball Contest, join the Valley Flop Contest. This is a challenge to all of you. Todd, all you guys too, and Brad, everybody out there. It's a challenge to all you officials. Come on down and spend some time with these kids. and. Let's uh, introduce everybody to and have fun. So I just want to let everybody know that's what we're doing on that particular day. I'll leave this up there for you guys. There'll be some more going around. Uh, there'll be some more information on Seco News and um, lgrproject.org here shortly. Okay. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Clear your calendar for that day, Todd. Yes. I heard we were going to be asking help cook some hamburgers. I was just going to talk to you. Uh, he said yeah. Valley Flop Contest. He oh. said you have yeah. I'm going to say I'm coming for the Valley Flop title, so. Uh, you join, I'll join. Any other citizen participation? Yeah. Oh. All right, we'll move on. Clean Valley Recycling is here with Bethany Bender. Well, I don't, I don't have to see my address and name, do I? No. You're, okay. You're with Clean Valley tonight. Yes. I'm here with Clean Valley Recycling, and I just wanted to let everybody know that we're having an open house and business after hours on May 17th. So it's not this Friday, but the following Friday. It is going to be from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Recycling Center. So that's the old sugar factory off of Highway 50. And um, we're just going to be having a bunch of different little stations there, uh, learning about composting, what curbside can do for you, um, what else? Maybe paper making. We'll have prizes and food from Villa Nueva. So we encourage everybody to come. I'm not going to challenge anybody, but <laughs> definitely come check it out. It's a fun place to be, for sure. So, a kinder, gentler. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bethany. All right. Um, city manager search. I will go first, and I'll turn it over to Maureen after that. Sure. Um, so, if anybody is wondering where we're at with the city manager search, uh, the job posting went live on Friday. Um, so, there is a link to that if you are local and you want to apply, or you know somebody somewhere that wants to apply. Uh, you can look up that on our City of Lana Public Notices Facebook page. Um, you can also Google it. I found it a couple different places if you Google it, uh, City of Lanta City Manager. Uh, so that is live. That is um, going right now. So hopefully we get a lot of applicants in, and then our search committee can do their, their job on it. Uh, Maureen has been working on a community survey, and I'll let her take over on that. Yeah, so it's uh, the... The whole council received a list, I think there were 18 
um, questions that the search committee had. Is that working now? You need to talk right. in. Yep, to okay. talk into it. Okay. <laughs> so the search committee gave us a list of uh, 18 different questions that are um, just sort of standard or good ideas for um, what a community might want to know about a incoming city manager. Input. And, yeah, input on. Um, and the council members, we went through them, and it, it was it was interesting because I think there were there were two questions that every single one of us had picked. So um, I think there was some good consensus on the city council of uh, what we would like some input on from the community. And um, the the survey's been entered into the a job form. There's five questions um, that we're looking for short answer input, and I will have the URL and the um, a QR code and I will give that to Melanie tomorrow morning and we are going to leave it open until the, uh, for two weeks so that we can have the input compiled uh, and have and see what kind of themes um, emerge by the next council meeting. So that will be available I would guess tomorrow Melanie and I can get that up. So. Thank you for doing that for us yeah, and, and getting that ready you and Mel. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited to see where this goes next. It's, uh, it's not been the quickest thing, but it, we're, we're doing it right and making sure that we uh, don't miss anything. You know, with Brad uh, being the interim, that gives us a, a lot of time to make sure that we are finding the right person to, to do this for us. And um, we look forward to see what the process brings us. So. And we can post the link to the, um, the job description and stuff as well so people can see what else is out there and the brochure and stuff it's all it's all public information it so is. we can put it all together yep all right moving on to new business uh, mrs harris i like when you take over for me no let's give it a try um always when we are looking at ordinances i understand that they are extremely exciting to read completely out loud, but this is the first reading of an ordinance approving the final plot of lands of senior village subdivision. Normally we would ask for a motion to approve based on the title alone, or we would need to read the whole thing out loud here. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to read it by title only. I have a motion by the second. second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Um, yeah. Get, what, where can you tell us more about where this is and what it means for our community as far as where the subdivision is actually platted? What are we voting on? I can tell you that I drove by the sign and that I saw all of the <laughs> um, the the plans of it. It is over off of Russell um, behind. So, and I apologize, this is like taxing my last ability to know streets, but if, if Russell is behind Topeka, and you take Russell to where it dead ends and takes a left, there is a sign there that says that that is what is going to become the senior village subdivision. Okay. About the intersection of 10th and 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 10th I think Ninth, it's further. Eighth, yeah, ninth or eighth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see the sign. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you'd have to access it. You'd get the Russell and turn right there. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll go look at it. So I can make a next video <laughs> vote next time. There you go. All right. So, any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Mrs. Harris. Next, we have an ordinance of the City of Lahana amending Title 17 of the Municipal Code. And because that isn't particularly illustrative of what's going on, I'll draw your attention if you have seen it. This has to do with zoning. That's what Title 17 deals with. And it is making a recommendation that for publication, we are, the suggestion is to change the word and in that particular section to, to an or. So instead of posting in the newspaper and posting it at the city hall, it would be changed to or. So it would be posting in the newspaper or posting at city hall. The 
um, request was made and what I understand happened at the Planning Commission was because we have a local newspaper that does not publish as frequently anymore so that in order to get things into the newspaper there is often a delay in being able to take action. That was what was described to me. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept amending the Title 17. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion. I, I would state on this that it was it, it still will be posted in both. I, I again spoke to the office today too. That was my question. That it would still be posted in both. Uh, would be posted in the city building first and the newspaper to cover the basis of timeline, but it will be posted. Just the delay of getting it into the paper is the issue. Mm -hmm. It actually would take like three to four weeks, so it puts you behind on, on moving forward on processes. So, uh, it, it still will be posted in both, just the city building would be the first posting. But the way it reads is or, so it's like either one is fine. Yeah, and that's what we, we kind of discussed a lot. Um, I, I believe, and this is my opinion only, uh, that everything should run through the website going forward. Okay, right now we're not at that, that point yet, but hopefully we get there a lot sooner. Um, but I think it should be and, so the website and the foyer and the newspaper, not or. Um, that's just my personal belief. Um, I understand for right now they want to just post it down there and then maybe they want to do both for, for time constraints, but, but that's where I fall on this issue, so I don't know how you guys look at it. So it would be in multiple? If it's and, but not if it's or. Right. I mean, they could say that they're going to do that. I'm not saying they wouldn't, wouldn't do that down there, but it, it they wouldn't be required to because it says or. Right. And you're saying by doing what so, you so want. So upon changing and. this, making it. An, an amendment to change it again is not an issue if they don't follow through with what they say they're going to do. That would be uh, illegal. Certainly the change could be made if the council wants to make a change. I think that the question always is whether or not there is time, whether we would remember this issue enough to bring it back to the rest of the group to discuss. In other words, right now we have a proposed answer to, to the issue. But it would have to be identified at some future time and brought back as a separate ordinance, just like this one is. I have a question about where one can find the ordinance to read it. The website. Okay, it, it oh. has through 16 on the Muni Code. Okay, so. It doesn't have 17 on the Muni Code on the website. And in the book that I was given, Upon being elected, section 17 is blank. So I I can't support something that I have no idea what it says before sure. or is, after. This is a, a 16 ordinance. The previous was a 17. Section 17? Sorry, I'm confused. This is ordinance number 16 and 62, correct? For posting. Ordinance 1662 is the number of the ordinance, but we're changing section 17.20. Oh, 17, yes. Yes. No. That is true. My book also doesn't have 17 in it. It is my understanding that the zoning code was adopted, but has, I'm, I'm not clear quite on the absence of 17. But what I think that is, is I was told that in February of last year, those of you who were here might recall, there was um, an assessment done by um, someone who was um, a consultant, if I'm not German. mistaken. Okay. And so, is it just that, my understanding is that the zoning code doesn't appear because it may still be waiting for certain corrections of spelling and others before it's uploaded? Is that correct? I'm sorry. Is it? It's not on our website. Mm -hmm. It's not on the website. It says to contact engineering. Right. And my understanding when I did contact engineering asking about it was that 
there may still be small tweaks that they were making before it could be uploaded because of spelling and other, you right. How did, how did we pass that? was done last spring, in spring of 23, but I don't know what the process has been since then, if there were pieces that needed to be brought back to council in order to enact it and then have it codified, those would be the steps next. Can, can I ask, what are we using now for a zoning code? Like if a property owner wants to come and build something, where do they go to find out what's allowed on that piece of property? Engineering. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. And then where did they go? They're looking, as I understand it, they're looking at the new set. But, but it's not available to the public? It sounds like it may not be yet. We'll okay. go with Martin and, and Amy and see if they can get to that. I think that's problematic. So I I would like to move that we table this. No, there's, already we there's already a motion. There's already a motion. So we're still in, we're still in discussion. All right. um, then I call the question. Okay. Uh, I'd ask for your vote. I'm going to hold it right there, but okay. it's, uh, that does not pass. And that's unanimous. Okay, now if you want to do something different. Did you want to do another motion? I don't want to do anything until I see it. So <laughs> I'll wait until somebody brings it back, and then I can... I mean, I don't want to do anything with it. There, there's no there there right now. Okay. This is Harris. Yes, I think we have moved to letter C. This has an even longer title, just as exciting. <laughs> this is an ordinance repealing ordinance number 1573, known and cited as the requirement of a non-cigarette tobacco retailer license for certain retailers within the city of La Junta and enacting a new ordinance to be known and cited as the Protection of Persons Under 21 Years of Age from Tobacco Act. Do I have a motion on that? Yeah, I'll go ahead and make the motion on repealing of Ordinance 1573. Yeah, let's make sure I had it right. And which is then being cited as a protection of persons under 21 years of age from Tobacco Act. All right, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And. I just wanted to clarify, you know, I read this. Nothing is in this is changing besides the fact that the state of Colorado is now 21 for tobacco. When this ordinance was passed and written, it was 18. So basically it's changing to 21. So Thank nothing you. as far as the body of the ordinance has changed. It's just clarifying that age difference. The age, since the age changed on the state level, we need to update it on our end. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks. I would just like to include some information since we're speaking about this, and a lot of this has moved forward because of the vaping issues in our youth. Mm -hmm. uh, the use of e cigs is a super unsafe thing for kids, teens, and young adults. Most e cigs contain nicotine, which is obviously everybody knows it's highly addictive, and it can be very harmful to the brain development of youth. At a young age, you start to develop new learning, and what that does is it causes reactions and synapses to fire in your brain, and the use of nicotine actually slows that process down and hurts that process. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very bad thing for youth, and it's a problem in America right now. Uh, young people who use e-cigs are more likely to smoke cigarettes in the future. Uh, one of the more famous e cigs is a Juul that's out there and available to kids through illegal buying. Uh, 
those jewels actually contain the amount of 20 cigarettes in one jewel. Um, they also use a thing that's called nicotine salts, which are even highly or more highly addictive than just nicotine. They allow for you to do larger inhales, and they're just way more addictive. Uh, approximately two thirds of all uh, users of Juul are between the ages of 15 and 23. The CDC has found that 99% of E6 contain nicotine, even though packages may not state they contain nicotine. Nicotine addiction can have major effects on mental health, especially in youth. Nicotine withdrawals, uh, symptoms include irrit or irritability, relent or restlessness, feeling anxious or depressed, trouble sleeping, problems concerning and craving nicotine. So most youth get turned on the vaping because they feel stressed or anxious. Uh, and they're introduced to this through friends. This creates a cycle of dependence. So the most common reason US uh, middle school and high school kids use them is for the purpose of just to try it out and they become addicted. So this this still is a, I mean, it's already in place, but just for knowledge of the public and everybody out there, it's, it's, a, it's a highly addictive thing and, and it, youths have access to them. So we need to educate our kids on that and, and make sure that things like this are in place to prevent that, so. Thank you, Damon. I think you need to go and speak. <laughs> I didn't know about that. Thank you. Any other discussion? I guess as I, uh, keep reading through this packet. I know everybody here should have got, got the packet, and but for anybody that may listen back later, little history on the compliance since this ordinance originally passed. Uh, when it first passed, there was uh, eight retailers when the ordinance went in effect. Currently there are 12. Two new establishments in the past 30 days, which is Puffin Stuff and Yaki, Yeti Convenience Store. And on the compliance checks, which were conducted through the Lahana Police Department and the Otero County Health Department, July 25, 2018, three of seven were in compliance with one retailer no longer sells. And as of August 24, 2023, nine of 10 were in compliance and one retailer sold to a minor operative and a citation was issued by the Lahana Police Department. And there are annual compliance checks that are conducted on these. Thank you, Jeremiah. Any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. That passes unanimously. <clears throat> this next one says me, but I'm actually passing that out to Mrs. Harris as well, too. So. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. So uh, the letter D reads, appointing a substitute municipal judge. The um, reason behind this and its addition to the agenda is that for the first time since we've, um, in our memory, our um, municipal court judge, Doug Manley, has taken a much deserved vacation as he has retired from being a county court judge here in the 16th Judicial District. His absence has created for the first time the concern that we for the weeks that he remains, he's on vacation, he left, I think, three weeks ago. He'll be gone for seven weeks. He's in Japan. He's not entirely available at any moment to do some of the things that we've become very spoiled that he's always available to do. So the question came up, what do we do when our municipal court judge is unavailable? And the charter permits us to have a substitute municipal court judge but that would need to be approved by council. So the question is whether or not we need a substitute. That's part of it. The next is how would we then compensate that substitute judge? Because we already have a year contract with Doug Manley. So we would need to make a decision first regarding whether or not a substitute judge is a necessity that we want to consider. And then second, probably an executive session, discuss what that compensation might be. Now, I'll share with you that 
we, because um, Judge Manley is prolific in his work as a municipal court judge, there is really only one municipality that does not use Mr. Manley, and that's Rocky Ford. Rocky Ford employs Rod Foraker as a municipal court judge. So I did speak with him. Um, he has to have permission from judicial because he also serves as a magistrate for the 16th Judicial District, and he has achieved that permission. He would be um, available to serve in this substitute capacity if it were something the council were to vote affirmatively on. Now, of course, you're not voting it with the first vote on who to hire. You're voting on whether or not we want a substitute judge. And that's not just for the remainder of this vacation. It's right. for going forward. Yes. If the judge wants to do that. So just right. Th this is taking care of the possibility that Judge Manley will not be here every day, always, and when he is not, what do we do in his um, absence, either for a vacation or as he may someday decide not to be our municipal court judge. We, we hope that's a long time from now, but we would like to have um, your vote on whether or not we want to substitute in the meantime. All right, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to appoint a substitute position for the municipal judge. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second, any discussion? I have a question. Can you give us an idea, what is a municipal judge, like what are the kind of, uh, what, what does a municipal judge do? Fair enough. So we have court here on Wednesdays. Um, in the, there are two separate sections. There's a four o'clock section and an evening section where Judge Manley is here. Judge Manley and his contract with the city covers not just his position as the municipal court judge, but also a staff member. In this case, Cassie Sanchez does that very aptly with him. They work as a team to administer the municipal court um, process here in, in the city of La Junta. So they have court, they have a municipal ticket, if you're asking, a municipal ticket can be just like a ticket that is written into county court, which if anyone's ever had, and I will not ask whether or not you have ever had a car, a traffic ticket, but if you have, there is always the option to be charged into municipal court or into county court. But if you're, um, there are other municipal charges that don't, um, are not mirrored at the county court level, like a dog at large, or a citation regarding weeds or rubbish in one's yard, things like that. Um, does that answer it, or did you need more about whether or not they have trials? No, that, that's okay. the flavor of it. Are there ever instances when a municipal judge needs to act, uh, I would say judiciously, but that's Or redundant. immediately? Or immediately. So uh, on an emergent yeah. circumstance? Yeah. I think the most common one that I've observed since um, Judge Manley took his trip has been that there are times that law enforcement gains a certain additional level of protection um, in some of the actions that they take by getting a warrant signed by the municipal court judge. Um, an example might be when our law enforcement officers need to enter onto a citizen's property because there is a um, abandoned car or other rubbish that they are going to be removing. And the statute does permit that but it provides an additional level of security for the officer to be able to say, I have a signed warrant permitting this act, instead of having to say, well, I'm taking it, take it up with court later. It's, it gives that additional level of confidence that um, the affirmation that the action is appropriate under the law. And that happens between Wednesday meetings, usually? It, it can, okay. yes. Now, if we were to employ Mr. Foraker as a substitute, because he would not be serving all the time, he might not be available to sign warrants on an emergent basis, because the, that particular part of his role would have to be rolled into the rest of his 
of substitute. So let's, it's just like a substitute teacher has a particular day, and on that day, someone else is standing in for them, there would probably be a, a session, um, that Wednesday court session, where if Mr. Manley, Judge Manley were absent and someone else stepped in, that would be the time when warrants could be signed. But certainly it would allow warrants within the week instead of waiting until um, the our other municipal judge were to come home. Okay. And is four acre the only option? Um, I don't think it's that that person is our only option. We could even, um, I suppose, make make a, a job description and seek other people. Uh, Mr. Foraker is the only other person who provides the service of municipal judge in a, uh, in a city or municipality that's nearby. Um, because Mr. Manley does take care of many of our, um, the 16th Judicial District cities. So not our only choice, but perhaps our um, most available and the only person so far that the city has spoken with about the possibility. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Do we want to do contract now, or do you want? It's, it seems like there's an urgency issue, isn't there? Well, I think what I would be wanting to clarify from our mayor is whether we would want to do that at the end of the meeting okay. versus right yeah. now. Um, but I do think that you're right. The next stage would be okay. to decide whether yes, or not. Both, yes. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, committee and board reports. <laughs> Any committee and board reports you guys want to share? I attended the Senior Center uh, Advisory Board Committee uh, meeting last Thursday, uh, starting with, I guess, for the this month, notwithstanding, for the next three months, they're going to be suspending their breakfast and lunch. It's just because the Senior Center has just become a hotbed of activity. They're, they're busy as ever down there, which is nice to see. Uh, the Senior Center will not be available for rental. The board decided against that. Uh, because of staffing issues or short staff, so uh, we're going to, they could revisit it, but as for now, it will not be available for rental. And I guess as times change, uh, behavior uh, has become an issue, not, not with everybody, but it's always just a few. So the city attorney, along with uh, the director of the senior center, are working on a code of conduct so they can maintain some type of civility in, some, in all circumstances. And again, these have been very isolated incidents, but it's best to nip it in the bud right now. So uh, that's what we're working on at the Senior Center. It's horrible timing with my announcement recently about attending dances. I assure you, they have no connection. <laughs> there have been, been no, at you when they said there there no <laughs> incidences at the dances. These are separate incidences. So, it's a rowdy bunch, huh? They all. <laughs> The names of the, everybody have been uh, changed to the yeah. yeah. Everybody's <laughs> presumed innocent. I'm going to get that judge right away. <laughs> you know, one idea. comment, though, that I would make about the code of conduct that we're talking about that I think that might be interesting to counsel. I have been asked to draft that, and part of the option that the city would have is to have a code of conduct that extended to city-sponsored activities so that it was not just for specifically to the senior center. Now, that's, that's up to you all, but when we start talking about policy that would be city-wide, it would be something that the council would need to discuss. How timely that we just got our civility issue from the CNL. A whole magazine to read about it. Absolutely. And, you know, you worry about conduct anywhere citizens gather. Uh, just so that the people that show up can have a, have a good time or can, can assemble and, and not worry about disruption and where its ability is maintained, the library, the senior center, the golf course, anywhere that the city. Council meetings. Especially council meetings. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Any other community or board reports? No? Uh, interim city manager comments. Unfortunately, Brad had a personal 
thing to go to, but he did send me an email, um, and his email says two things. Uh, he will have a full update on the city webpage on the next council meeting, and he signed a support letter for CDOT trying to grant, trying to get a grant for the Highway 50 corridor uh, along the 140 mile stretch of southeastern Colorado to build 12 passing lanes. Uh, so he will update us on that at the next meeting as well, too. Um, I had a, another uh, call with Brock Hinkhouse right before this meeting started, um, and he wanted to let people know that we're looking about a month before the pump and the fountain is working at the city park, uh, hopefully sooner, but about a month out is what he's going to stick with for his timeline. Uh, those of you that do have Facebook, you may have seen a picture of some toilet paper being um, misused in our bathrooms at City Park and at Brick and Tile Park. Uh, Twelve out of the last 14 days it has happened. Uh, the two days that it didn't happen, we took the toilet paper out of the, the, the bathrooms. Uh, they are on a timer. Uh, they open at 6 and they close at 10 p.m., 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, we are looking at camera footage to try and see if we can find out what is happening, but if you know who's doing it, please uh, let us know, and please, if you don't want to let us know, just tell them to stop. That's not what uh, we need to worry about with our facilities like that. Uh, we don't want to go the route of having to do something different because we, we can't take care of it. Uh, I remember the toilet paper crisis in 2020. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then the other thing he wanted to just throw out there too uh, was that the right field fence blew down at the Potter Park uh, with all the wind that we're having. They think they have a quick fix up, but um, they're, they're hoping it doesn't get too much more windier uh, with their ingenuity that they did to put that up. Uh, but that was from Brock, so I'll thank him for helping us out with that. All right, we are governing body comments. Any governing body comments? The, the pumps at uh, First and Radish, that when that area starts to flood, uh, are going to be starting, uh, hopefully they start working this week. Uh, they've hired, or, or Martin has hired SBT, which is a local company. Prior to that, they've been contracting with an outfit out of Alamosa. But SBT, a local company, will start working on those pumps. Only one of those pumps is set on automatic with a float. When they're done, both of those pumps should be uh, set to automatic with a float. So hopefully if we do have any flooding, I don't know if that's optimism or not, but usually it's, it's not, it's, it's flooding down there on you. So when they're done with that, both of those pumps should be working on auto and take care of that flooding issue. He's also going to look into putting a canopy over those pumps. I know that there's a fence around them, but those plastic and rubber parts are being exposed to direct sunlight. And if that happens for months on end, along with it, varying temperatures during the winter, when we need those pumps to work, if they've been exposed to hot and cold, hot and cold, and they, they're going to fail us, so hopefully just a can of people assist in keeping them operable for when, for when we need them. Thank you. Any other governing body comments? Sure. Um, on behalf of Ward 3, uh, Lisa and I had a uh, ward listening meeting two weeks ago um, on Monday night at six o'clock. We had nothing else to do on Monday night, so. Uh, I, we had probably, I don't know, 15 people show up. It was a, it was a pretty good turnout, and um, a, a range of topics. We don't need to, to go into them, but um, we also recognize that it was sort of impromptu, and so we're doing it again on May 13th, um, again, so a week from tonight. We like Mondays. Um, We'll do, try again at the Brick and Tile Park, but on the other side away from the Arroyo, <laughs> we're going to try to avoid mosquitoes this time. So uh, Lisa and I will both be available next Monday, 6 o'clock, in the Brick and Tile Park for a listening event. So, And then maybe the next meeting we can uh, do a summary of some of the trend, the topics that have been coming out. So, awesome. Good job. Thank you, guys. Uh, any other coming body comments? Well, they had their event at Brick and Tile Park. Uh, I did mention last meeting that I will be doing walks through the ward. Um, my first one, hopefully, weather's not going to be too bad. 
It's going to be this Thursday around 6 o'clock. And I'm actually going to start at the corner of 14th and Smithland. And it's going to be a little bit longer than normal, but I'll go from 14th and Smithland south to 22nd. And then I'll make my way all the way down Cimarron to 1st Street. And then I'll head back. So th there is time to catch me out on the streets. Hopefully, you know, I don't need security, but uh, uh, I'll be making that. And if you want to join me at any point in the time and, you know, have your issues or complaints about the ward or the city, uh, now's your time to catch me. Uh, I've affectionately dubbed it a pause in politics because I will be walking with my dog. So feel free to join me and I will announce future routes, but it will be between Smithland and Bellevue, which is War Two. And also I wanted to bring up for, for me personally, uh, summertime uh, starting 4-H activities. So I will be actually end up splitting some of my time with the city uh, on city council meetings, as well as volunteering as a shooting sports instructor for Otero County 4-H. So if you don't see me here, that's probably where I'm at, helping mentor our future leaders. So that's all I have. Thank you, Jeff. Seems like Ward 1, they're laying the gauntlet down for you guys. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are going to do next. I don't know. Maybe you do yeah, the... Yeah, we need to come up with a name. It's the ballet flop contest, I guess. They have all the complaints on their side. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, all I have is um, the community cleanup, the first one of the year. Um, there's a lady, her name was Angela Ayala, and she organized the first one. Uh, thank you to her, thank you to um, Sandra Brown, Steve Hardy, Dason, and then the Otero College Wrestling Team. Um, they are absolutely amazing. I mean, they were through with it before you know, uh, Gil Escobar showed up too, but those kids were so fast that you know uh, the cleanup was pretty much done. Um, they they just got after it. They thought it was the coolest thing ever. So Invite them the, to the next one. They, well, <laughs> I think they a lot of them graduated. Oh, no. um, but hopefully Brandon can get a, yeah. a new group of, okay. of wrestlers to keep yeah. that same um, uh, community pride and, and help us out because they, they were awesome. Uh, it was a little bit cold this time, but it didn't matter. They were they were in it, and it was done. Um, so I don't know when the next one is planned. Ballpark, okay, that's funny. Uh, what about uh, Coffee with the Cop? When's the next one of that? We don't have one planned currently. We're going to try to go about every two months, so watch for flyers. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah. Well, May is historically a law enforcement. They have a law enforcement appreciation week, so... To see a cop, thank a cop, and should have said something earlier with the award that we had tonight. But thank you for your service. Thank you for all first responders and law enforcement out there. I won't. I won't adjourn us, but if Jeremiah would do me the honor. All right. I move to go into executive session for the purposes of determining positions relative to the matters that may be subject to negotiations, developing strategy for negotiations and instructing negotiators under CRS 246402-4E. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. <coughs> and that passes unanimously. We may have one issue to do after this. Thank you. So if you want to stick around, you can. If not, I can text you. Thank you.